The idea of the lecture is not to be boring, you know, not, not to be too boring, but to give you some interesting informations and maybe you can use them to realize why, why it is really important to do something before your regular practice session. And, and I, will be, I will try to be as, as short as possible as short as possible and as persuasive as possible. So, so if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. And after this short presentation, theoretical presentation, we will try to do something together. Okay, some silly drills, some silly stupid drills, but I will try to to convince you that if you are going to do them regularly or at least some of them regularly b before your uh, regular uh, football soccer session, it would significantly decrease um, risk injury. And I think it is very important. So, so let, let's start as, as, as soon as possible. When you consider uh, women basketball, we can say that this is pandemic worldwide, you know. Every Every year, a couple of million new players, women uh, football players, uh, uh, rises uh, uh, worldwide. And this is really a pandemic and the Football Association, European Football Association and the World Football Association is doing an excellent job to increase awareness, to increase uh, as much as possible the number of women, women players. I don't want to go into detail why it is good to play football. The, the, the benefits are vast, are very, very big. So you increase the level of health, you increase the level of um, uh, socialization, etc., etc., etc. So, so, you know, playing any sport, particularly football, is more than excellent. There is no doubt, no doubt about that. So I congratulate you on that. It is very good to be involved in, 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 in soccer, both amateur or, or professional level. So those are some of the data. 29 million women and girls are, are playing football today. And, and the forecast, the forecast is that in a couple of years from now, as soon as 2026, there will be over 60 million uh, women that are going to play football. So, so when we consider the women football, it is increasingly catching up with, with, uh, with the male football. Male football is, of course, still more popular and everybody's looking at the, 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 the male games, but the women football is growing in its, in its, um, in its numbers uh, uh, annually, day by day. So it is excellent, of course. It is more than excellent, but not everything is excellent. There are some gender specificities that should be uh, looked upon and we should be aware of those things in order to, to, to be able to benefit most from the playing, from playing football. First of all, there are some cardiovascular specificities of female athletes. Generally, when you compare men and women generally women has women has smaller hearts smaller lungs blood volume which means that this is limiting uh, women's aerobic metabolism females have the same ability to improve this is very important. So, women cannot run as far as, as men. They cannot cover 10, 12, 12 or 14 kilometers per game as, as men. But when you train regularly your aerobic capacity, you can improve in the same percentage as men. So, training is everything, yes? If you train regularly, you will improve and you will get, you will get better. What is uh, interesting, female athletes burn more fat than, uh, than the males when exercising. There are also strength deficits. Of course, you know this. After the puberty, after the puberty, the difference is bigger and bigger. Males are stronger than women's. Women's are somewhere between 40 and 50 percent weaker than men in upper body, not so much in lower body, not so much. Somewhere around 30 percent in lower body, 
if you consider just the lean mass, if you take the fat off, if you consider just the lean mass, there is almost no difference in, uh, in uh, lower body strength between men and women. And what is also very important, if you train regularly, you can improve strength level at the same as, as men. So the same proportion you can you can improve the strength level. This is very important, you will see in, in, in next few slides. Body composition is a little bit different, of course, between men and women. In general, female athletes have higher proportion of body fat than male athletes. And, and they use more fats. They use more fats on the same relative intensity of running. So when you are playing soccer game and, and and males are, are playing soccer game, you are using more fats than, than, male, uh, than male football players. This is interesting in, in one way. Uh, it seems that females are going to be the world champion in, in ultra marathon, ultra distance running, you know. As the, as the distance increases, as the distance increases, you know, for those hiking, I don't know, 250 kilometers or running to, or running 160 kilometers. In those events, females are going to be the world record holders because they have those kind of uh, metabolism that, that is good for those, those activities. So not in all activities, men are superior than women, of course, even, even in, 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 in sport. And of course, because of hormonal regulation and some body composition uh, differences, generally, generally the women are more flexible, flexible than, than men. And what, what does it mean? When, when we consider all of these differences, there is one big difference that we should, uh, should uh, take care of when we are uh, discussing uh, uh, women's, women's sport. And that is that women, unfortunately, unfortunately, you have much higher injury risk, and especially in soccer. And not, not in all injuries, but in one specific injury, ACL, so uh, rupturing the, the anterior cruci cruciate ligament, may be the one of the worst injuries that, that, that there is generally in sports. Unfortunately, women soccer players or handball players, women athletes, have much higher injury risk, up to eight times higher. So, so you, you, you know, uh, um, when you when you have when you have a uh, hundred male soccer players, maybe two or three or four will will have ACL injury sometimes in life, and when you have a hundred uh, female athletes, up to eight times more, up to fifteen or sixteen of of you, un unfortunately, will have a big chance to, 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 to have severe injury like ACL. So, so, you know, playing soccer is excellent. Being athlete, women athlete is excellent, of course. But we should take care about, about an injury risk. And this is the lecture. What can we do about this, this injury risk? Why? Why women are, uh, are, are more predisposed to have higher injury risk? There are several factors. Some are intrinsic. Some are hereditary. We cannot do nothing about that. Your body physique. For example, females have joint instability, more joint instability. Hormonal regulation is different between men and women, you know, of course, because of your cycle. Ligament structure is a little bit different. Knee size and structure is different between men and women. And we can do nothing about this. You are born like this and we can do nothing about this. But there are several factors that can be that can be addressed, and those factors are called extrinsic factors. For example, fitness level. If you increase the fitness level, you decrease injury risk. We will see a little bit later about this. If you increase motor skills, the technique, but I don't think uh, those uh, football technique in particular, but technique of landing, stopping, accelerating, decelerating, if you increase technique of those movement patterns, you significantly can decrease 
injury risk. And this is, this is important. Also, strength levels. Strength levels, you know, you are generally, generally you are weaker than male athletes, generally. But it doesn't matter. If you increase your level of strength, you significantly can decrease injury risk. I don't know if you, if you know Star Wars, yes, if you are, if you, you are familiar with this, this is the best movie ever, yeah, Star Wars. And this Master Yoda used to say, may the force be with you. Yeah, that is is the most popular sentence in this in this whole serial so it is really like this if you have enough force the bigger the force you have you, you will play football better but maybe that that's not so important but you will decrease the injury injury risk and that is very important also the way you use muscle muscle activation and change of direction and landing technique is something that we can work on and we will show you a little bit about this so there are some anatomical and hormonal factors that we cannot that we cannot do nothing about this for example just just to name a few you have a bigger q angle the, the women, because of this pelvis structure, you have a bigger Q angle. Q angle is the angle between femur and this shin bone. And because generally women have this bigger angle, they have bigger stress on a knee ligament. And this is because you, you have to bear a child, yes, and etc. etc. So, so, but what can we do? What can we do? We can do about extrinsic factors, we can do a lot of things. For example, the ratio between quadriceps and hamstring strength. There is one very specific detail about women athletes. Somehow, somehow, I don't know how, we still don't know how, generally when, when women are running, cutting, accelerating, decelerating, turning, they uh, usually uh, use more quadriceps and gastrocnemius muscles more than men. And they are less using hamstring muscles. Even those hamstring muscles have a, um, a response time is slower. So you are not using so much hamstrings. And even when you are using hamstring muscle, it is delayed. The activation of the hamstring muscle is delayed. And you see, this, this hamstring muscle is very important. If he doesn't work properly, if he's not strong enough, or doesn't work uh, in an appropriate time, you know, if the timing is not good, then the load, then the load in this ACL ligament will be much higher than it used to be, and then you increase the injury risk. So, so one very interesting thing about uh, women athletes is that generally they are not using hamstring muscle good enough with the appropriate timing and the hamstring muscles are not strong enough. So maybe we can work on this. Yes, we will discuss a little bit, uh, a little bit la later. When, you, when, we, we, uh, when we discuss uh, what is going on with, with an injury, how, how ACL injury happened, we can say that in most of the situation there is non-contact injury. There is non-contact injury. You are running, you are doing something, nobody touches you and you get, you get injured. So mostly during landing, when you jump and you land, or while changing of direction. So what is the general reason for, for ACL injury? The, it is non-optimal body position during cutting and landing tasks. And based, based on this injury mechanism, so this is how we get injured most of the time. So what can we do besides increasing strength levels, besides increasing strength levels, we, we must try to learn how to stop, accelerate, decelerate, turn, etc., etc. So technique of movement patterns should be, should be better. So, so maybe we can look at
You saw that? Or another situation? Sorry. You see, this moment when the knee valgus, when the knee collapses inside, this is the moment when he gets injured. Or, tap. you saw this left leg. This is the, this is the most frequent mechanism. It's, it's not the only one, it's not the only one, but this is the most frequent. So, when you have this specific position, knee valgus position with the extended knee this is most likely the mechanism of acl injury uh, of acl rupture so so uh, when we know this mechanism th then we go backward what can we do it it would be nice to never have this position yes during during the the, the uh, playing the game or, or training session and we must to learn how to position our knee our uh, leg in order to to avoid this kind of this kind of position so basically this is the position when you find yourself in this position with the knee valgus position and extended knee this is the basic mechanism of of uh, acl injury and and what is the clinical pearl when we know this so what can we do about this we must learn our body when landing and when changing direction and when doing all of those movement patterns to never be in this position so, so we must learn technique not to ever be, if possible, never to be in this position. A and lastly, lastly, we will show you some of the drills. So, so generally, what, what, I, uh, what I was trying to tell you, if you increase the level of strength of the important muscle if you're in your body, you will decrease injury risk. Not to mention that you will play football better. If you increase the level of strength, you will play the football better. But I don't care about this. I care to, to decrease the injury, injury risk. So if you increase the level of strength, specifically hamstring, but everything that is surrounding knee, you will decrease injury risk. Th this is one thing. The second thing is neuromotor control. If you learn how to position your, your knee during cutting maneuvers or landing maneuvers you can decrease the injury risk and the new trend new trend in injury prevention is this uh, the third thing that I, I am going to tell you when when the injuries occurred when the injury occurred look this 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 black and yellow guy here he sustained ACL injury but how he sustained it he was guarding this guy he was guarding this guy and you see this guy may make a fake move so he make a fake move he tried to go left and then he suddenly change and go right and and this guy he he watches the opponent and he first go his right and when he change side now he sees that he is changing changing the the, the uh, uh, direction of movement and he try to reply to his movement he tried to respond to his movement and in this point of time he positioned badly his knee he positioned badly his knee and here he sustained injury so what i want to tell you until until recently everything we did everything we did in injury prevention was based on the drills that that we were that were um, the closed skill what does it mean while we were doing cutting and landing we were concentrated on the position of the leg of the knee of our the upper body etc etc but that is not what is happening during the game you know 
when you are during the game or the practice session, you cannot think about is my knee positioned correctly or how my upper body is looking. No, you are looking at the opponent or you are looking at the ball. Yes, you, you have an external cue and you, you are looking external cue and you see something is happening on the pitch and then you change direc direction based on this external cue. So this is new way of, of uh, thinking about rehab also. We must do some kind of drills and Boris will, will show you mm, simple drills that are going to do exactly like this. Y you are going to move on the court, but based on some external cue. For example, I throw you the tennis ball. Yeah. You must, you must see the ball, you must visualize where the ball is going, you must catch the ball and at the same time you must land properly and try to have a, a good, position, good position on the field. So, what I wanted to tell you, it is brilliant to have you included in, 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 in football. It's brilliant. It's very beneficial for you. You will be healthy, happy, etc., etc. It's, it's more than good. It's more than good. But it has its risks. Unfortunately, unfortunately, you have higher chance to get injured in some specific injuries in, in, uh, during uh, practice and, and, and competition. And we should do something about this. And this is why worldwide there is a big trend. What can we do before or after the training session to decrease an injury risk? There are preventive programs, injury preventive programs that are well known worldwide now. And, and what can we say? Are, if, you, if you are going to do some of those drills, on a regular basis, before or after the training session, you can de decrease the injury risk up to 70%. So, if you are going to do some of the drills that we are going to present you here, you, you will uh, significantly decrease injury risk and you will improve your fitness level, level even more. There are many programs, there are many programs, most of them are based on the same principle. For example, this is one very famous in America, PEP program. This is the most popular in, in soccer, in football generally, FIFA 11 plus. This is Sport Metrics, uh, another one from America, and this is from Norway, uh, ACL prevention, prevention program from, for, for handball players. But it's all the same. It's all based on the same principles. You need to increase the level of strength. You need to increase the level of neuromotor control, stopping, turning, landing skills, etc. And if you are do going to do this on a regular basis, you most likely you will significantly decrease injury risk and you will benefit soccer, playing so and training soccer more. We will present you some of the this is the new idea. Yeah, you saw this. It's, it's not yesterday, but a couple of years now, and we will show you some of these drills. You see, while you are doing something, while you are doing something, you must land properly or something like this. It looks stupid, yes. <laughs> it looks a little bit stupid, but, but it, it makes every sense. You, you see, it makes every sense. So you are doing something, you are watching the ball, you, you must catch the ball, and while catching the ball, you must land properly. Try to avoid this, this bad position in, in, in your... And when you consider uh, science, when you consider science, science is uh, very persuasive. You can decrease up to 88% decrease in injury risk in the first and 74% uh, in the second year when doing some of those drills on the regular basis. Basis. And basically the drills are simple, jogging, strength training, of course, to strengthen, to strengthen hamstring and, and um, 
and quadriceps mus muscles, Russian hamstring as one of the most famous drills. Load, load plyometrics, the drills I showed you previously, and some agility drills, stop and go turning and, and making those, those progression can significantly decrease injury risk.